want to fund things that aren't going to help children learn to read, to learn to write, to learn to do mathematics. This week in Pennsylvania, the much anticipated report on how to properly fund public schools is released. Actually, two reports with partisan differences. A bitter lawsuit over a sweet treat will break down the fight over the name Farm Show Milkshake and why the state has jumped into it. And we're joined by former Secretary of State Kathy Bookbar, who oversaw the much maligned 2020 election and failed to properly advertise an amendment for sex abuse survivors. What is she doing now? We will have the answers later in this show. Hello and welcome to This Week in Pennsylvania. I'm Dennis Owens, covering hot topics in PA policy and politics, as well as the issues that are important to you and your families. Unconstitutional. That's how Commonwealth Court characterized the state's funding of public schools. A legislative commission spent months holding hearings and listening to testimony. This week, they released their much anticipated report, or more accurately, two reports with a partisan split. Sarah Wilson has the story. Uh, the report having received a majority of votes, the report is adopted. Two reports, one commission, multiple findings. If we're not voting on a bipartisan report today, I see little reason to compromise at this point. One from Democrats, one from Republicans, laying out what needs to change in Pennsylvania's school funding system, which was ruled unconstitutional last year. We tried, and there are a lot of aspects of both reports that you'll see are similar or the same. The Republican report recommends a reset on the base amount of cash each district is given and that the General Assembly take on improvements to education policy. Including assisting students in low achieving schools immediately through the Pennsylvania Award for Student Success Program and property tax relief. Six yes, six no, three abstain. The GOP report defeated on party lines. So it was eight to seven. Yes. Report two, backed by Democrats and passing. This report needs to address adequacy, equity, and timeliness. Finding that the state is underfunding districts by more than five billion. It recommends dollars be driven out over a seven year increment. Investment in school facilities, uh, examining the charter school funding, investing in our education workforce, investment in student supports, including grade level literacy and literacy support programs and K through 12 mental health. The report only contains recommendations. It does not require the divided legislature to act. In a statement, Governor Shapiro saying the report targets investments needed to adequately meet the needs of schools. These two reports will not head to the state legislature, but lawmakers say they are important for Governor Shapiro to consider when he gives his budget address next month. For This Week in Pennsylvania, I'm Sarah Wilson. Our thanks to Sarah. Pennsylvanians will get a few extra days to secure health coverage. The deadline to enroll in Penny is extended to January 19th. Typically, the deadline is January 15th, but that's the Martin Luther King holiday this year. Penny is Pennsylvania's official health insurance marketplace where people can get financial savings to reduce the cost of coverage and care. We are now firmly into 2024, big election year, and there's lots of jockeying politically. Democratic State Senator Jim Brewster from Allegheny some, County some announced he will not seek re-election to take on uh, new challenges. He has held that seat since 2010. Democratic State Representative Nick Piscitano announced he will seek that seat and not run for his House seat. Republican Representative Dawn Kiefer announced she is running for the state Senate seat in York and Cumberland counties, currently held by Republican Mike Regan. Regan announced he will not seek re-election. Kiefer is the head of the conservative PA House Freedom Caucus. Kiefer also giving up her House seat to run for the Senate. The state Supreme Court now at full complement. The latest justice sworn in Thursday. He's Dan McCaffrey, Democrat from Philadelphia. He was sworn in by his older brother Seamus, who is a retired Supreme Court justice. And he got a big hug from Big Brother as he took that oath. He was elected in November in an election that spent more than $22 million, one of the most expensive court elections in PA history. There are now five Democrats and two Republicans on the high court. The State Farm Show wraps up Sunday. It is the 108th edition in the building of the same name in Harrisburg. Lots of politicians make the trek there, including Governor Josh Shapiro, who was joined by U.S. Secretary Tom Vilsack, Secretary of Agriculture. He brought a $26 million check to shore up the Commonwealth's 
ag infrastructure, especially small and medium-sized farms. Vilsack emphasized that food security is national security. Let me ask this question. Would you rather be the United States or China? The United States has the capacity, with its 320 million people, to feed every single American without importing a single thing. We grow and raise enough. China cannot feed its own people. It requires the United States and others to provide food for their people. Who do you think is more secure? Governor Shapiro said providing working capital to young and lower income farmers is also a priority in his budget. Well, the milkshake may be the most consumed item at the Pennsylvania Farm Show. They are delicious, but the state has indigestion over a lawsuit about who can call their cup of goodness a Farm Show milkshake. They are sucked through thousands of straws. It's pretty good. Pretty chocolatey. It's nice and thick. And they're on everyone's lips. And the milkshakes. I'm gonna get my milkshake. Uh. See, I can't wait to try those salted caramel milkshakes. The milkshakes have me in a chokehold every year. And every year since 1953, the PA dairymen have had a chokehold on selling their shakes at the farm show. They're really rich in flavor. But these tasty treats are causing indigestion among previous partners with lawsuits over the name. Once warm relationships, now frosty. This is a dispute between uh, several friends and organizations with long-standing connections to both uh, the farm show and to the department. It began in 2017 when the dairyman invited Camp Hill-based R.C. Her to sell farm show milkshakes at fairs, festivals, even football games throughout the year and share the profits, even benefit nonprofits. But Her successfully trademarked the farm show milkshake name even though it has never served a milkshake at the farm show. When the arrangement ended in 2020, the dairyman sued, arguing 70 years of serving milkshakes at the farm show should give it the name. What came to light is we have to protect the words farm show, right? The State Department of Agriculture has jumped into the suit saying it, not the dairyman, not R.C. Her, owns the name by virtue of hosting 108 farm shows. Farm show has value. That name has value. So we want to bring it back and, and protect it and then uh, manage it in the marketplace versus letting it sort of uh, fight it out in court. But court fight it is, and Ag Secretary Russell Redding doesn't like being sucked into it. It is highly irritating to me personally, right? Uh, and I don't think at the end of the day it's of benefit to either party. And we're going to protect the name Farm Show. And at the end of the day, verdicts are being rendered every day by customers in the food court, most blissfully unaware of the fight in federal court. I didn't even know. Does it matter? No. Tastes good. That's all that matters. It is all that matters. Case could settle. If not, it's likely a year before it churns through the courts. Up next, we are sitting down with Kathy Bookbar. Remember that name? Former Secretary of State who is now working to secure elections across the country. Welcome back. She may be the most controversial secretary of the Commonwealth in history. Kathy Bookvar, who served under Governor Tom Ridge, resigned after her department botched a constitutional amendment that would have helped sex abuse survivors and was maligned by many for her handling of the contentious 2020 election. But Bookvar's passion is election integrity, and she's now working to protect it. It was an awful time. The 2020 election is seared into Kathy Bookvar's brain. The lack of patriotism, the efforts to actually overturn the votes of millions and millions of Pennsylvanians and Americans across this country, it was, it was pretty devastating. Uh, as an American, as a Pennsylvanian, and as Secretary of State. Make no mistake, our democracy is being tested. An experience that led her to start Athena Strategies, and she's now consulting on election security. It's everything from protection of election officials to making sure that voters understand how elections work. Republicans scoff at Bookvar consulting on elections. They call the 2020 election that she oversaw a disaster and blame her for constantly changing the rules like allowing drop boxes for mail-ins, which are not in the law, and allowing mail-ins to be counted three days after the election, also unprecedented. And it's partisan, they argue, 
because the lion's share of those mail-ins are Democratic votes. Let me ask you this. Why were there, why were more Democrats voting by mail? I can tell you why. It's because President Trump and the Republican leaders told people not to vote by mail. They told their people not to. Bookvar reminds that 2018 saw new voting machines, 2019 a new law that overhauled the system, 2020 a pandemic, a perfect storm for election officials. And she argues most of those changes were prompted by court decisions. That's the problem is if the litigation is flying fast and furious, you have no choice, right? Also fast and furious, claims that the election was stolen. Numerous PA Republican lawmakers, both federal and state, called for decertification. And social media rumors were rampant, including a truckload of mail-ins coming from New Jersey. I don't care if there were 16 truckloads of ballots being driven in and deposited in Philadelphia. If they didn't have barcodes that were tied to people who had actually applied, been approved, and been mailed ballots, they wouldn't be counted because that barcode tells the counties everything they need to know about whether that person has applied and been approved before they're counted. So I think like that's a critical fact that people seem to not get at all. The election process is secure, full stop, Bookvar says. You can be confident as you all go vote today. The danger? Intentionally sowing seeds of doubt in bitterly partisan times. But the more that we are spreading disinformation and threatening our election officials, the more we are doing the bidding of our overseas adversaries because they thrive on our instability. So this is a national security issue. Like this is, this is serious. The victims had no chance. But the 2020 election was not the most serious issue of Bookvar's tenure. How the victims are feeling today, she has no other choice but to resign because she has failed us all. Bookvar's Department of State failed to properly advertise a constitutional amendment to let survivors of childhood sexual abuse sue the perpetrator. It was removed from the ballot. This is an extremely sad day that, you know, the incompetence of the Secretary of State was devastating. It was devastating. And, you know, my heart, my heart just it was awful. My heart goes out to all of them for the delay. A report found it to be human error and better processes are now in place to catch such mistakes. But Bookvar was out. To me, there were only bad choices here and offering my resignation was the best of all bad options. I knew if I didn't do that, it was going to distract from the important work that needed to be done. Here we are again, tossed like political footballs. Important work like redoing that sex abuse amendment, which is still undone. Trauma does not have a timeline. I mean, the legislature, this is the easiest thing in the world to have. This should have already happened, right? This should have been on the ballot last year. But Bookvar's focus is now this year's big election. She says if you have doubts about the system, volunteer as a poll worker or poll watcher. That will restore your faith, she says. For the rest of us, do your homework because people are trying to trick you. If you see a picture of a fire in a polling place, is it real or is it AI? You know, if you see a video or hear an audio of a candidate speaking, is it real or is it is it AI? And that could influence, that could get people to stay home. And this is gonna sound sort of crazy, but in some ways I'd rather people not believe, start from the presumption of not believing anything they see. Assume that everything you see is AI and then work to actually confirm the truth. I just mentioned human error, I made one. She worked for Tom Wolf, not Tom Ridge. It was written correctly, I somehow said the wrong governor. Stay with us, more This Week in Pennsylvania when we come right back. If you've got the President of the United States and his allies encouraging you to vote that way, what do you think the turnout would have been by mail in 2020? It would have been very different, Dennis. And welcome back to This Week in Pennsylvania. More with our analyst, Christopher Nicholas of the Eagle Consulting Group, Brittany Cramsey of Brit Cramsey Communications. Is it fair to say that all of the angst over this election, was it stolen or fraud, revolves around mail-in ballots, right? I mean, that's pretty much the issue. And she's saying Republicans encourage their people not to vote by mail-in, which they continue to still not do. 
Um, she's, uh, what, do you, what do you make of that? I think mail-in voting was the fall guy for Donald Trump and his supporters in Pennsylvania. In other states, they made other claims of fraud, even when mail-in voting wasn't new or absentee balloting wasn't new. But the mail-in voter claims, the claims of fraud, have remained a problem here in Pennsylvania. And Republicans have years and cycles ahead of them until they deprogram all of the lies that were told to them by Donald Trump and feel trust and confidence in voting this way. So uh, the new law in 2020 that gave us all this did 50 or 60 years worth of I think changes. it was 80, actually, but yeah. Uh, changes in, in law in one fell swoop. So there are a lot of things going on, which we're still trying to work through. I don't, yeah. think, I don't think Republicans have to be deprogrammed of anything. And I will correct my Democratic friend to say, look, it's just as fine to vote in person as it is uh, by mail. Democrats like to make you feel guilty if you don't vote the way that most of them do. So <laughs> I don't um, think anyone should feel guilty for participating in any form that works best for them. And that was the whole point well, of Act good. 77. So, and I would say yay for my Republican brethren. I think we're moving away from you know, uh, being against uh, absentee balloting vote by mail to being uh, for it. There's lots of big Republican initiatives now, which is great. I'm someone who says, let's be agnostic about how people vote. And remember that to win statewide races in Pennsylvania, we have to do better at persuasion first. She's not wrong when she says in 2018, the county's got new machines. In 2019 came Act 77, as you just pointed out, an overhaul. 80 years in the making. And then, of course, 2020 was a pandemic. It was a perfect storm. And these election officials are trying to, to figure it out. Yeah, I think our election system showed that it is vigorous and it can withstand a lot of strains. Again, everybody had to get new machines in 18, then the big change in 19, then the pandemic and integrating the new changes in 20. So it's been through a lot. It's still standing. It's still standing because thousands of our friends and neighbors across the state volunteer on that volunteer they get a stipend but work on election day for 14 or 15 hours and a little bit of money and a bunch of donuts and that's what keeps the system uh, strong so it's not run by some big computer somewhere sorry <laughs> it's run by all sorts of our friends and neighbors and counties across the state of course it's been a long time since our times were precedented and i hate the expression new normal but we are still kind of seeking that in mail-in voting counties have asked for small changes things that would allow them to process them earlier process them easier get a little bit more clarity on what the dates should be and when you can count them so i don't know if we've established the smoothest way to do it yet but we're getting there and it's been like you said a long time since we've had the elections that we were used to for 80 years and there was a couple of legislative fixes including uh, early canvassing maybe early voting the legislature has not opened that law early canvassing means starting yes. to count the ballots before well, 7 a.m pardon me processing them. Yeah. processing yeah. which is just undoing the envelopes yes. you would get results a lot faster because all you have to do is feed it into the machines and if you get those results by election night as florida now does with a similar situation that that less claims of a mistrustful thing or that something was going on the, when it goes a week as it has the last two presidential elections in pennsylvania that's when people start to think it's, something's up it's of gone course. a couple of weeks in the big democratic strongholds of allegheny county and philadelphia where all the people live okay right well, okay they have more people and more machines in their systems too it's clear that the states that have had big time absentee balloting and voting longer than us have kind of figured that out so hopefully that will be our future too. The last thing I would say that I always say, if you're worried about putting too much pressure on the system, vote the old fashioned way, go to your precinct. That puts the least amount of pressure on the system. We gotta try to sell something the old fashioned way. Take a break, we'll be right back, stay with us. We don't have any legal authority to remove anyone from the ballot. Here in Pennsylvania, if one's gonna be removed from the ballot, it's gonna be done by a court, period. My personal view on this is this election should be decided at the ballot box, not in the courts. Welcome back to This Week in Pennsylvania. More with Christopher and uh, Brittany. Okay, that's Governor Shapiro. Some states, Maine, Colorado at the moment, until the U.S. Supreme Court rules have removed Donald Trump from the ballot. He's saying not only can't we, but we shouldn't. And John Fetterman, by the way, who's not Republican or a Trumper, says the same thing. <laughs> Donald Trump should be on the ballot. He says, I think we'll beat him on the ballot, but he should be on the ballot. Sure. I think it, it would be wild to expect this Supreme Court to kick Donald Trump off the ballot when he uh, appointed nearly half of the justices. But I don't think that we should be using court mechanisms to get him off of the ballot. It's only going to increase fears about a fix being in or the system working against Donald Trump. We beat him the regular way last time. We'll beat him the regular way this time. He lost the popular vote by 7 million votes four years ago. And I don't think he's done anything to impress anyone. He's just been indicted countless times since then. So there's no reason to believe that he could win the popular vote this First time. First of all, it's a good we don't, we don't elect 
presidents by popular vote. But go ahead. Yeah. First of all, it's good to see Governor Shapiro holding the D rigueur milkshake in front uh, of the butter sculpture. Yeah. Regardless <laughs> of whose milkshake, regardless of whose milkshake it is <laughs> and how it's branded, that's good. Uh, secondly, Trump has appointed exactly one third of the Supreme Court, <laughs> three of nine, um, and I would hope, as I've said before, that the Supreme Court much sooner than later gives us guidance because as you can tell from the two cases you cited and what the governor said, every state does it kind of differently, right? Some states have appointed secretaries of state like we do. Some have elected secretaries of state. So it's doubtful that a Republican elected secretary of state would you know, throw a Republican candidate off the ballot. So the Supreme Court's called the Supreme Court for a reason. So please give us some guidance and direction. And they did say they'll take it up. So and then we'll, we'll get on with our lives. Uh, but John Fetterman, Josh Shapiro, fair to say they're two of the most prominent Democrats in the state, both wanting to keep Trump on the ballot. You think there's some politics involved there, too? Well, as I've told you before, Democrats have that game plan figured out. Let's blame Trump for everything and talk about abortion. They have that has won them elections in the last couple of years. And in politics, as I've said before, you like easy because it's worked before for you. <laughs> Are we pretty much resigned to the fact, and Governor Shapiro said he anticipates it will be Joe Biden, Donald Trump, despite the fact that polls suggest 70% of Americans don't want that. I like the results of the last matchup. I have no reason <laughs> to believe that it's going to be different. This time, I know a Easy, lot of Americans right? disagree yeah. with it, but these are the choices that we're faced with. We're going to remember what four years of Donald Trump looked like as we're re-exposed to him in this campaign season, and we're going to have the same result. At least here in Pennsylvania, all the polls show that if it is Trump on my side and, and still Biden on the Democratic side, it's a total toss-up right now. Both candidates are in the mid to low 40s. It's pretty clear no one, again, will get 50%. In 2020, it, I think Biden got 50.1 or something. So it's going to be tight again, which is good for us. We're going to have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us on This Week in Pennsylvania. If you missed any of the show, you can watch it on thisweekinpennsylvania.com. Real simple. We'll see you here next weekend.